Fun. What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another Coast to Coast podcast episode. Today, we're bringing you our mock draft 2.0 uh, right before the actual draft. So, you know, it's going to be the same format as last time. We, we switched up the picks a little bit. But uh, first up on the board, we've got Carson. Um, yeah, I mean, Trevor Lawrence. I ain't got anything else. Next pick. <laughs> Um, yeah, next pick, obviously, uh, Jets on the clock. That's my pick here, number two. I think it's pretty straightforward here. They want Zach Wilson. I don't know if Zach Wilson wants them, but Zach Wilson is who they want. So I'll take Zach Wilson. I think it's a pretty clear-cut choice at this point. So, yeah. All right, the next pick is mine, and this is where it gets kind of interesting. Um, I mean, I think there's no way they don't go QB. It's just whether they go – Fields, Lance, or Mac Jones. But from what I've heard on the inside, a.k.a. from you two, um, you guys really like Trey Lance. So I'm going to go with Trey Lance. Which, as a Niners fan, I'm happy with. As long as it's not Mac Jones. I just think the other two, they just have, like, so much more upside. Like, like athletically, you know, arm-wise, it's not like Mac Jones has that much better of an arm, you know. I mean, I don't know. It just, like – for someone like Shanahan that can do so much, uh, you know, offensively, like scheming, like why would you not want like two amazing athletes like that in Lance and Fields, you know? Yeah. Next up we got Chan. Um, okay, so what I have written down for my notes here is best quarterback on the board. And I was Trey Lance because I do think Justin Fields might get picked early, but that whole epilepsy thing kind of changes things around, but – Hopefully that doesn't affect them too much. But I do see them taking a quarterback as well with Matt Ryan coming, kind of heading out the door. So best quarterback on the board is Justin Fields. All right. And we are back to the Bengals pick with Carson. Um. So, yeah, all – you know, most of the quarterbacks gone. Bengals obviously aren't going to take uh, a quarterback. Um. I think with this pick, you know, since you took Fields and not Pitts, I think the Bengals, like, have to take Pitts. I think someone that is just, like, you know, a generational player, like someone that's been billed as, like, kind of, you know, like a, a camp bust, you know, like a, a guaranteed, you know, at least solid, you know, solid player. Um, and because, yeah, like, Sewell's great, but I think, you know, there's plenty of, you know, offensive lineman depth in the draft. Um, you know, unless Sewell was, like, someone like a Quinn Nelson or something, I just think you have to go with, like, the – the generational build player in Kyle Pitts, uh, you know, adding another weapon uh, and also someone that can, you know, help the line a little bit too. Um, but I, I think they should go with Pitts. If he's still on the board uh, at five for the Bengals. Yeah. So going on to pick six, obviously due to some trades that went on uh, before, I mean, since our last mock draft, uh, the Dolphins now select here. Um, I'm actually going to go a different way here. Uh, I think they could have gotten a weapon, but I have a feeling that Rashawn Slater's high on their board. It's a guy that people have mixed opinions on, whether it be Panay Sewell's the top guy. I honestly believe Panay Sewell is the best tackle, but I think they believe Austin Jackson has some faith there at left tackle. And given that Slater has the ability to move uh, inside, outside, I think Slater's going to be the pick here at number six. I think a little bit of a shocker, but that's what we see every year in the draft. So I'm putting Slater uh, from Northwestern number six overall. Wow. Okay. <laughs> No receiver, because I, I feel like, like if Chase or Smith's on the board, I feel like we'll see. I, don't know. I, feel, I feel like, like they, they can go, they can take a receiver Either later way. in the draft. I feel like that makes more sense. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Because um, oh yeah, they're at eighteen. I feel like one of those guys would, could probably fall to eighteen, like a Waddle or somebody. Yeah. Um, you know that leaves me here with the with the Lions pick at seven, and I've got Penesul on the board, but would the Lions, you know, given that Sewell falls to them, would they take him? I think there's a certain point where, um, you know, the team's kind of, once they see him drop off, there's he's going to keep falling until it lands on a team that's in dire need of a tackle like that. Um, because the Lions are, let's be real, like they're not competing. And they also, I don't think they believe in Goff as their franchise QB. Um, no way. He's garbage. Exactly. Yeah. So, but but I think they do want him to succeed. Mm -hmm. So I think for that reason, I'm gonna take Penesul. 
You got to protect Very golf. Valid. I mean, Very if valid. I talk about golf, dude, that can help the run game. You know, if golf's not doing what you need to do, they got a solid running back depth. And having a tackle like that can definitely change your outside run. Yeah. Yeah. And it's someone that, like, can protect your, you know, future quarterback draft pick. Because yeah. I think that's inevitable, too. You know, like, they're probably going to be pretty bad for at least a couple mm-hmm. years. And they're going to be in a position where they're going to end up taking a, you know, a, a prize quarterback prospect mm-hmm. down the line. Yeah, it's going to be hard for them to move off the contract of Goff. So once Goff's contract is up, they'll probably look to draft a quarterback. You know, maybe next year they go after someone like Sam Howell or, you know, Spencer Rattler, whoever the guys are at the top. We don't know who's going to be at the top. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, moving on to Chan with the Panthers pick. All right, I had a lot of, uh, like, uh, going into this pick. Idealistically, I mean, they want to better their offense. They have Robbie. They got DJ. Bringing in Darnold. Um, but the thing is, the defense is still missing a lot of pieces. It's not the defense that used to be led by Luke Quickly, right? And I think they want to fill that hole as fast as possible because that Luke Quickly defense definitely helped them get to Super Bowl. So did Cam Newton. That defense was amazing. And coming out of, like, fresh out of college, and he's already getting Luke Quickly comparisons, I'm not saying he'll match up to them, but I think they're going to take Micah Parsons. I think that's a good-ass pick. That's yeah. a good aspect. No, I, I, their the, offense, the, yeah, their offense is going to make work. It looks nice. Happen. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, I didn't want that to happen. I, I don't want it to happen because I'd rather have the Broncos take that. I think the Broncos are going to fuck around and take a quarterback because they're idiots. But we'll see. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to the Broncos pick, <laughs> Carson. Take it away. Yeah, I mean. The wide receivers are solid. I honestly, like, I do actually like the Broncos roster. I think they're one of those teams. Like, there's a lot of teams that kind of fall in this category. There's a lot of teams that, like, are like, oh, we're, like, a quarterback away from, like, being pretty good because the rest of our roster is solid. Um, I feel like it would be the most Broncos move ever to draft, like, Mac Jones if he's still on the board, like, if it goes like this. Um, Because they're just, you know, trying to find whatever whatever white quarterback will work for them. Um, (laughs) But, uh, you know, I mean, judging by how this draft's going, I'm not going to pick, like, who I think they'll take. I Just, you know, by how it's gone so far. If, uh, you know, Jamar Chase is still on the board. Um, I think that's someone that they should probably take just because of his talent. And, you know, Drew Locke, I think you, you probably know he's not the guy, but I think if you're still going to roll with him, you at least want to give him someone that can help him succeed if, you know, he ends up showing some flashes. Uh, so I think if he's still on the board, like they should probably take Jamar Chase. Yeah. All right, first wide receiver off the board. All right, That's three years so, in a row with the first round receiver, no? If, uh-huh. if they were to take Jamar, I mean, yeah, yeah, so, and, uh, yeah, uh, you know, know, first cool. kind of nasty. Yeah, but the thing is, dude, I don't know if they'll take him. Like, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. See. It could be a trade up situation. I honestly, if it comes down to like if this board is looking like the way it's looking, I don't see them. I see them trading down. Like I could definitely see that. Yeah, they have no better yeah, exactly. Here. Yeah, because yeah. I think like um, if one of those four, like uh, uh, Lance or not one of the four, but like if Lance or Fields was still to them, I think they'd probably take one of those two guys. But just like judging how like ours has gone so far, I think like yeah, there's not really one guy. They should probably either trade down or just trade like or or just draft like best available player. You know. I don't think they'll be able to trade up. I don't think it's the environment that they're working with because no one wants them to have a quarterback. You know what I mean? No, they, they probably have to trade up. down because exactly. it's like, exactly. you know, there's not really a guy that they would like desperately mm-hmm. want or need at this pick. Like the quarterbacks would be gone. Like if it you know, goes like this. All right. So I'm on the clock now with the Cowboys pick. And I think it's an interesting situation here. I think they're going to go corner, but I have a proposal. I know we didn't make a trade in our last mock draft, but. I know Jose's sitting there, number 15 with the Patriots. They've been eyeing a quarterback this entire time. And the guy that, you know, everyone thinks is the unathletic, I mean, the more athletic Tom Brady or whatever. I think Mac Jones is on the board. Jose, if you want to do so, I think we can propose a trade. I think there's a lot of cornerbacks that are still good in this draft. You can still get J.C. Horn. You can still get Patrick Sertain or Caleb Farley. I think it makes sense because the Cowboys have a lot of needs to fix. And I think the Patriots have been really unorthodox this offseason. So I think a trade from 15 to 10 would be probable, you know, maybe throwing in some seconds and a third in there. So something along that line, Jose, what do you think about that? Um, you know, I have heard of the Cowboys possibility of trading down. I know they do really like J.C. Horn uh, out of South Carolina. 
probably more than they like Patrick Sertan. And I think they're willing to wait, um, you know, and trade down a little bit and hope that that Horn is still there at 15. So I think that's actually a pretty, you know, solid trade. So we'll go ahead. All right. Well, we'll have our first trade on the board. Uh, Patriots and Cowboys switching spots, uh, exchanging some second and thirds. Uh, just, you know, not that there's whole details on that, but I think it's a trade situation that could very well happen. So um, we'll throw that in there. And Jose, you are now on the clock and I'll just switch spots with you. Okay, wait, how do I? Uh... Um, there's a trade button you can use, but just go with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Um... So that moves me up to 10 as the New England Patriots. And obviously, I'm here going to take Mac Jones. All right. So Mac Jones off the board. That makes it. I think it's what they should do. It's just not like the ideal, like New England thing. It's just like. It, but they've been on North Fox like, all offseason. Yeah. The thing is, that, they that is all very true. Agents. Like. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Cause yeah, it's like that's like the least likely New England thing to do is just sign a bunch of guys. So it's like, why not just like go against it? Maybe Belichick sees he's like, you know, I gotta switch up my my offseason strategies a bit. Well, I think it's because I think Belichick might be just acting out um, because he's t- he's getting a lot of shit. I mean, you saw him get kind of heated because that was giving him shit for doing so bad, you know. And then he's like, "Well, you can't win a bunch of Super Bowls and not have to rebuild." Yeah, you know? and it doesn't help his cause when like Brady's out there, you know, winning a Super Bowl with a different team, yeah. and he's over there, you know. I mean, like, hey, if you think about it, dude, everybody thought the Patriots were back. Like that beginning first couple of games, Cam Newton was going stupid, and then I don't know what happened. Yeah, they, he caught on, but yeah. yeah. I don't know. Mac Jones is the most likely quarterback they would take out of this whole draft. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a cookie cutter Patriots QB. Yeah. Um, Sit here, behind Cam Brees. So, yeah. uh, I've got the Giants pick at 11. I mean, they just bolstered their offense. They've got Kenny G. Um, they're getting Saquon back. You know, they made a few good defensive signings in the past couple of years. So I think what they really need to focus on here is protecting, protecting not only, you know, Saquon and then their run game, but also their QB who gets sacked at a crazy rate. Um, so I think for that reason, I'm going to get Christian Derrissaw out of Virginia Tech. I haven't really heard his name in a while. It's kind of funny. I've seen him like, I've seen early mock drafts, but he's been a name that I feel like hasn't had a lot of talking about. And I don't know if he didn't have a pro day or something like that, but I haven't heard his name in a while. Um, okay, up next on the board, we got number 12, Eagles, and that is Chan. Take it away. Okay, uh, so what I had written down was um, either tight end or wide receiver. I think they need offensive weapons. and Their wide receiver draft last year was not good. Their tight ends are leaving. I mean, Goddard might replace Ertz if Ertz does leave. But um, with the people left on the board, I, I really do think they need a wide receiver. I think – um, uh, Jalen might be their guy. So with the best receiver on the board, we're gonna have to give it to Devontae Smith. But I think they might take Devontae Smith. All right, solid pick. Um, up next we got Carson with the Chargers pick. Um, let's see. You, you took Smith, right? Yes, yeah, Smith. Yeah. Um, Chargers, uh, solid weapon. Um, I mean, besides Keenan Allen, um, you know, the weapons are like a little shaky just when it comes to like injuries. Um, but I think, you know, you really just got to worry about protecting Herbert. You've got your quarterback of the future. They need to tackle. So I'm going to go ahead and take um, a lot. Elijah Vera Tucker, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Tackle out of USC, yeah. uh, you know, staying in SoCal. I think it's a great fit for them. Um, and just, you know, really got to emphasize protecting Herbert because, uh, you know, he, he showed last year, like, he, he's the truth, so. Yeah, true. Facts. Elijah Bear Tucker. And up next, we've got Vikings. Liam, take it All away. right. So, interesting situation here. Uh, obviously, we still got uh, the projected top corner in the draft, Patrick Sertain. Uh, well, and all the top corners in the draft still on the board. I don't think they're going to go corner because they already have a solid core. You know, they just signed Patrick Peterson. They've seen some good play from their young corners already. Um, I don't think wide receiver is going to be the option. Just kind of looking at this list. Um, I think 
makes most sense for them here. I think an edge would be realistic, but I don't think it's, I think it's a little bit too high to take an edge. I think there's some guys that they can maybe get in the later rounds. So um, I'm going to go with the first linebacker. I mean, sorry, second linebacker off the board, a guy I'm really high on. I think uh, for this Mike Zimmer system, he's going to fit. Um, he was basically a safety out there for Notre Dame last year. So you know where I'm going. I'm going Jeremiah Wosu um linebacker, won the Buckus Award. Uh, he's basically a safety hybrid. You know, Anthony Barr is getting older. Fifth the Lourdes alongside Eric Kendricks. It could be a really nasty duo. So um, I'm going to put Jeremiah Wilson Cormo up here, uh, you know, so off the board at number 14. Now okay. Dallas Cowboys. So, Liam yeah. Young. Yeah. So um, I think, you know, like you are just talking about, um, they're probably going to be higher on J.C. Horn, and I really liked what I've seen from him lately. Um, as much as I do love Patrick Sertan, I think Patrick Sertan's going to basically get picked in the next two picks anyway. So um, I'm going to go J.C. Horn, uh, corner, South Carolina, really big physical guy, you know, getting the Jalen Ramsey comp. Um, he's shown what he can do at South Carolina. I think he's going to continue to succeed. Obviously, in our last mock draft, he fell really low, but uh, he's gotten a lot more praise since then. So 15th overall. Cowboys select J.C. Horn, cornerback, South Carolina. Uh, I saw something about his coverage resume the other day, and it was ridiculous. Any idea what the word was on that? I, I didn't watch the video, but I will later, and I will get some insight on that. <laughs> but – um. Up next, we got the Cardinals pick, Chan. That's all you. Okay. Um, I think the Cardinals had a prolific offensive uh, offseason. Um, I think the addition of Oswan Jeffrey and then um, – did they add anybody else to the offense? Uh, A.J. Green. And A.J. Green. And like, uh, James Conner. And James Conner, yeah. Like, I mean, come on, dude. Like, that – like, right there. You know, that's – and uh, Murray seems to get better every year to the point where I'm really considered drafting him as my starting quarterback, like this guy's unstoppable. And I think they're not going to really need offensive weapons and they're not going to want wide receivers. Um, and the ideal pick here with the loss of Peterson is a cornerback. Um, and I don't think Sertain is going to necessarily be there. So I'm just going to say, um, I think they're going to take Farley. I, I like Farley a little bit better than Sertain and I see them, I see Farley fitting better in that system. Wow. All right. Caleb Farley on the board. Up next, we got the Raiders pick. Carson, take it away. Uh, I mean, the Raiders just lost uh, Orlando Brown, um, who the Chiefs just Raiders? absolutely snapped. The Ravens. Oh, they, oh, the Ravens, the Ravens. You're well, the Raiders. Wasn't he on, wasn't he on <laughs> no, the Raiders? On the Ra he went to the no, no, that's Trent Brown. That's Trent Brown. Trent Brown. Oh, well, regardless, uh, I'm bugging. Regardless, the Raiders still need a tackle. Um, and I'm going to go with Walker Little, this guy uh, coming out of Stanford. An absolute beast. He was the number one recruit in his class, 6'7", like 300 pounds. Uh, he's a stud. Um, and, you know, I think their receiver, receiver is, you know, decent. But, I mean, they just really do need help on the offensive line. So, you said Walker Little. Walker Little, Stanford. Yeah. He directed very high uh, originally. All right. So I'm back on the clock uh, with the Dolphins. It lines up. They'll have their picks again. Um, obviously, now they got, you know, they got Will Fuller. They got Devontae Smith. Um, they got Kaseki. So I think it'd make more sense for them to go <laughs> wide receiver here. Again, um, Aussie Sertan would be awesome, but it makes no sense. They have two guys that are locked down corners. Um, that they're paying huge money to. Um, I think an edge would be fun too, but I don't know about selecting Quiddy Pay, Phillips, or o o o Jason Oweya right now, even though Jason Oweya had an amazing uh, pro day with a blazing speed. But I think adding Jalen Waddle alongside Tua Tagovailoa, you didn't get Devontae Smith, so let's give him the next best option. A guy that people think is even better than Devontae Smith when it comes down to it. So uh, I'll take Jalen Waddle. I'll stop his fall here at pick 18. And up next, we've got my pick on the Washington football team. 
So looking at their depth chart here, I mean, they've got a pretty decent, a pretty scary D line, I should say. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna go D line. Um, they did just get Kurt Samuel, but I, I don't think that would stop them from taking a receiver here if one fell to them. But I don't think there's any here really worth taking. Um, Patrick Sertan has been on a severe downslide, and they do need secondary help. So for that reason, I'm going to take Patrick Sertan. All right. Bolster up a nasty secondary that already exists. So, And they already have – I mean, they're basically Alabama 2.0 at this point since they have so many Alabama players. Wait, they have, <laughs> oh, snap. I just realized they have, they have William Jackson. Yeah, they have – I mean, but they also have, like, I mean, I don't know. They got Kendall yeah. Fuller, I think, who's Kendall a Landon, slot guy. William but, then, I mean, they still need another boundary corner, so. Yeah, I'm sure they'd find somewhere to put him. If, if he falls that far, there's no way they're not taking him. Exactly. Um, up next, we got Chicago, and that is Chan. All right, I think this is a no-brainer pick. Uh, they lost Fuller out of complete. Um, just like, just they fucked up, right? Because there's like contract problems that ended up losing Fuller for them. So they, they are going to desperately want a cornerback. Um, so I think the best cornerback on the board right now is going to be uh, Newsom, Greg Newsom. And I think that he's a little bit better than what he's projected to be. But the fact that he wasn't able to play last year um, is definitely indicative of what he has to prove. So I see them taking Newsom. Newsom. Back to back corners. Yeah. Uh, Carson, take it away with the Colts pick. Yeah, um, the Colts uh, really solid defensively. Uh, O-line's great. Um, I think, you know, running games, you know, show at the end of the season with Taylor, really, really solid too. Um, and I do like their wide receivers. Uh, I like Campbell a lot. Hopefully, you know, he can stay healthy. And I love, uh, you know, Michael Pittman Jr. as a, you know, very late sleeper uh, in fantasy. Um, but I think they should take another wide receiver. And, and I like uh, Bateman out of Minnesota a lot. Um, so I think they should end up taking him with the uh, 21st pick. Politics. Now we got Liam with the Titans pick. All right. So um, just looking at the Titans depth chart, I think it's kind of obvious they need a wide receiver. But I don't know if any of these guys here are worthy enough at this point. I think it'd be interesting to pair Elijah Moore alongside his teammate at Ole Miss. So I'm going to look at the options here real quick. Um, obviously, they addressed Edge with Bud Dupree. Um so, yeah, I'll just go with the pick here. Uh, I think a very underrated guy who's been going up the board recently. Um, I'll take Elijah Moore, uh, absolute slot guy out of uh, Old Miss. So pair him alongside his um, alma mater uh, teammate in A.J. Brown. So a new pairing out there in uh, Tennessee with Moore and uh, A.J. Brown. I like it. I like it. All right, now we've got the Jets pick. Um, they obviously uh, took a QB with the second pick. So that leaves me here, and I'm stuck between an edge or an O-line and one of these two tackles at the bottom here. But I think there's no way they're not going to bolster the defense in the first round at some point, um, especially after, after taking a, a QB. So I think for that reason, I'm going to take Jason away. All right. Give Robert Sala an edge monster. Up next, we got the Steelers, and that is Chance Pick. Okay. Uh, so, um, I mean, look at this team. This team is still kind of a playoff contender. I don't think the offense is performing at the caliber it used to, but the defense is definitely not hindered at all. You know, I hate to say it, but it's still a top five defense. Um, and for that case, I don't see them taking any defensive players, even though there, there are a lot of defensive players left. Um, but, I mean, I think they need a, they need a running back. I, Snell is nice. Connor was nicer. Um, 
So I don't think they're going to rely on Snell that heavy. In that, in that case, I think they're taking Nigel Harris. I don't see why they would. I like it. I yeah. like it. And Plus, honestly, honestly, I would. Yeah, Nigel Harris is fucking nice. He is. I know. Back. Yeah. I, I would actually, like, look at him as, like, a, a fantasy option, too. I think he would, like, that would be a oh, great situation. He'll be, top would... ten, he'll be top ten projected like Clyde was, I guarantee yeah. you. Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, would, I, I, I believe in Najee Harris, dude. He's a stud. The only issue I see with him being top ten is we don't know who's starting yet. And I don't see if they're, like, I don't know. You know, because the offensive line, anyone will do good in. But I don't see why they wouldn't play Snell when they give him a lot of reps when Connor was there. It'd be a good dynasty pick, yeah, because yeah. they might have to, like, split snaps a bit. Yeah, yeah. At first, just depending on, like, who wins, you know, the starting role at first. I like that pick a lot, though. Up next, we got the Jaguars pick uh, acquired via Rams. Was this from the Jalen Ramsey trade? Yes. Okay, so Carson, it's all you. Um, they're going to need to protect uh, their franchise QB and Trevor Lawrence. Um, they need a tackle, so I'm going to go ahead and go with Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State. Good um, pick. Cause, yeah, it's just going to just gonna be important to protect Trevor Lawrence because, I mean, I, I like the receivers, but um, and they obviously have a lot of holes, but I think the first thing that should be addressed is just, you know, making sure that you can at least somewhat protect Trevor Lawrence. You know, we don't want another Joe Burrow situation. True. Exactly. All right, and next up we've got the Browns pick. Liam, all you. All right, so um, looking at their needs, I think their offense should be fine now. I don't think with those two running backs, you need much wide receiver options. You know, Odell either is going to play for them and be solid, uh, but otherwise I still like the options they have. You know, they have a really good tight end core. I think it's a top five tight end core with all the guys. You know, they still have some guys that might get moved, like um, David Njoku, who I think they can get some decent value for. Um and then, obviously, I'd love Donovan Tebow Jones. So we're going to look at the defense here. Uh, for Edge, they just it says it's a need for them on PFF, but that's not true. They just acquired Jadavion Clowney. And I know it's going to be like a broken record. He, we think he's going to do good, but I think it's sincere this time. I think he's going to be, like, decent. I think he'd get, like, seven sacks maybe, but he's going to be a disruptor. I mean, I remember watching him when he was on the Seahawks just go against that nin- Niners line and just destroy us. So I think I'm going to go linebacker here and a guy that I've seen has been flying up the boards lately. It's a guy from Kentucky. Uh, he's getting a lot of comparisons to some of the top linebackers in the league. He's a really rangy guy. So I'm going Jamin Davis, linebacker from Kentucky. Hmm. I really like your point about Clowney. Because it's like, dude, when you have Garrett to worry about, like, you're, you know, exactly. people That's are going to have to forget point. about Clowney. Like, it, yeah. it's it's a really good fit. Mm-hmm. And I've just seen Jamin Davis's name fly up the draft boards. And from what I've been hearing from him, I mean, it's something the Browns need to take a risk on because they haven't had a good linebacker since Schobert was a pro bowler for them. Mm-hmm. Obviously, now he's off in Jacksonville. And they're, you know, their linebacker depth chart's kind of weak, you know. I mean, they just signed uh, Anthony Walker, though. But, you know, Jacob Phillips, Chitone, Sion Chitaki, whatever. I can't pronounce his name. I just butchered that. But, you know, I think they have a good job on the secondary this year. Um, obviously, that defensive front's going to be nasty. So, I think they need to go linebacker, and that's a guy that um, I would pick. Um, all right, up next, I've got the Ravens pick here. Obviously, they just lost uh, Orlando Brown. They do need a tackle. I was hoping I could get Tevin Jenkins. Uh, sadly, I could not. And the only other tackle left that you could justify taking in the first round here is Dylan Radons. Don't know too much about him, but he seems like a pretty good athlete. He's a big guy, um, you know, and he had a great performance in the senior bowl. Uh, I would have gone Cosme there, but that's just my opinion. Oh, from Texas? Yeah, because he's the Colts have a really good, like, opinion of him, according to the media. But, I mean, still a good pick. A uh, guy that's, as you said, showed off at the uh, Senior Bowl. So, Up next, we got Chan with the Saints pick. Okay, uh, so I thought about this pick uh, a good amount, and – I mean, they re-signed his mill. He's not coming back. The defense isn't great, but it's good enough for now, right? Um, so what do you need? Losing – you lost Emmanuel Sanders, Michael Thomas, Mr. Slant Boy. Everyone's clamping him up, right? Your best player offensively is uh, uh, Alvin, right? So you need somebody else to bring a little bit of 
a little bit of spice to the mix. And I think they're going to take the best receiver on the board, which just happens to be – it's it's between um, Marshall Jr. or Moore. I don't know which one they'll take, but I'm just going to say Mar- uh, Marshall Jr. Um, for the draft order. But I could see them taking Moore as well. All right, keeps in the same st- – the state of Louisiana. Yeah. And you now we got the Packers up on the board, Carson. Um, I would have taken, I, I would have taken Marshall for sure. Um, I really like his game, and I think that would have been a dope, dope fit uh, next to Adam. So I'm gonna go ahead, going ahead and taking the the other guy that Chan mentioned. I'm gonna take more. Uh, the Packers desperately need a wide receiver too. Who, knowing them, they probably still won't take another wide receiver. They'll probably, they'll go to some other random position, but um, you know they should take a wide receiver. And I think it, uh, you know if Marshall's gone, it'd probably be more. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take more. Yeah. Up next, we got the Buffalo Bills. Got a few needs to address, mostly defensive. But take it away. Yeah, I mean. I think uh, looking at, you know, their offense, obviously the main concern was the run game because Josh Allen can't do it all himself. Uh, but I'm pretty biased here. Uh, so we're going to look at the guy uh, who's the number one prospect, the f- 41st all-time prospect coming from the U. He had a fantastic pro day. And I think he has potential if he doesn't have any health concerns, which has been the reason why he's been out for a major of his career. I'm taking Jalen Phillips. I think he's, you know, I'm just, you know, putting my bias aside. I think he's a freak in nature. He was able to disrupt uh, off the edge for us this season. Um, I think Quiddy Pay is still a solid option, but um, Quiddy Pay is going to get picked up either sometime in this draft, uh, either in the early second or might get picked in the first round anyway. But uh, I'm going to go Jalen Phillips. I think working alongside that um, Bills, you know, with Ed Oliver, they just need a guy that can be a star. And I think he's got the potential to be that. Solid pick. Um, up next, we got the Ravens, newly acquired first round pick from the Chiefs. Uh, obviously, I secured a, a tackle with their last pick. I feel like they do want a receiver, but I've heard a lot of talk about them drafting uh, Amari Rogers in the later rounds. So, for that reason, I think there's a guy here on the board who has fell really hard. Um, you know, a guy who who has been pretty who was pretty dominant last season. You know, a pretty good defensive tackle prospect. He's going to sit behind uh, Calais Campbell or whoever they've got on that D-line next year. Christian Barmore. I think there's no, I don't think there's any way he falls this far in real life, but if he does. Uh, it's a weak DT class. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. But yeah, taking Barmore. Nice. And up next, we've got the final pick of the first round, the Buccaneers. Chan, take it away. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to – very, very, very early Super Bowl, Super Bowl prediction, the Buccaneers are going back. I mean, their roster – it's the same roster, right? No one left. They re-signed everybody. They have a solid offense. The defense is the, – the front seven of that defense is amazing. It might be a little old, but it's, it's amazing. The weakest part of that defense has to be the secondary – I, they did ball out, but I think that comes down to coaching. Uh, against the Chiefs, they balled out, but it came down to coaching and preparation. And for that situation, I think they're going to take a safety. And they do seem to like a little bit guys who are undersized, but can still have that uh, that uh, fierceness when they play. So in that situation, I think they're going to take Elijah Molden, safety out of Washington. I like the pick. And that is going to conclude our first round mock draft for the 2021 mock draft. We will see the actual results, obviously, this week. You guys have any final final thoughts? I don't know. It's going to be an interesting draft. I think there should be a lot more trades than happened in ours. I think it's going to be pretty, you know, crazy. The quarterbacks all going up there in the top. You know, who's going to be the guy that falls? It's going to be the question. I mean, is it really going to be five quarterbacks in the top ten? Or, you know, is Atlanta going to take Kyle Pitts and is going to throw everything off? So, who knows? I feel like a lot has yeah. changed since our last mock draft. Oh, easily, yeah. Yeah, easily. I think team needs have changed with the way things are working right now, and especially with the trades going on. 
Man, I, and I think Liam is right. I definitely do see a lot more trades uh, happening. The guy that the team is going to want will not be there. So in that situation, I don't see why they wouldn't trade down. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see the, the QB situation, especially Mac Jones, wherever he gets taken. Could be three, could be like 20s, or could be not. It could be 20s. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he drops, if he drops, drops. Yeah. And then the wide receiver situation is very interesting too. Like, mm -hmm. is – Jamar really going to fall to nine? Because then again, like, you've been seeing the graphics out there. I don't there. think like, so. That's the only reason why I took him, just because he fell so hard. But I don't think yeah, he'll but it's like to nine. Wide receivers drafted in the top ten, like, they haven't been super successful. That's the thing. Like, in the recent years, it's all the guys that go in the later rounds. Like, you got to look at the draft class uh, with Terry McLaurin, A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf. All the guys are drafted uh, in the second round or later. And those guys are the best draft people from that class. I mean, and then, you know, you look at people like the Eagles. They went out there and selected um, Jalen Rager. And then, you know, the next guy behind him is better. So, you never know what happens. I mean, and Henry Ruggs was the top receiver last year, and he didn't even pan out uh, to this point. And then we still have to see what we can see from uh, Jerry Judy producing, uh, hopefully at a better rate next year. So, it's going to be very interesting to see how this draft turns out. It's going to shape fantasy and the NFL uh, going into the next year. Yeah, I'm excited to see what the Patriots do, too. Yeah. I think um, Mac, I like trade, Mac Jones. They the pick. But, like, me too. I like him or maybe Field. If Fields falls and I gets to the Patriots, that would be scary. And I see Fields developing a lot better under Cam than I see uh, yes. Mac Jones. Like that, Mac Jones. He's mini Cam, bro. That would be a perfect fit. That would be scary. Or like a lot of people are talking about Jimmy G coming back. If Jimmy G comes back to that team, honestly, it's a lot better fit for him, in my opinion. Under Bill Check. Oh, I, don't 100%, him. Yeah. I think he's a backup quarterback, but he's a he's an experienced backup quarterback, right? He can mentor people. And he's shown he's a very capable starter. I mean, he got the Niners to the Super Bowl. Like yeah. he, he's he's not a bum. Like I, I we I think we overhate Jimmy a little bit too much just because like like the Niners, like I know we're pretty disappointed with them, but he's still a very solid quarterback, capable of you know, getting wins. All right. All right, well. That'll do it for this week's mock draft. Uh, thank you for listening in, and we will see you soon. Peace. Peace.